from the beginning of Dying Grotesque in 2018. Uh, how did it all began? Dying Grotesque started as a solo project by our frontman Vadim Tsimbaluk. Uh, he started is just as a project for his studying of sound engineering, sound producing, uh, and uh, he needed to get some uh, own music to work with to to learn mixing, mastering it. And so he listened a lot of old school death metal at that time, such as Inton, Grave, uh, Bolt Thrower, and all these things, you know. Uh, and he started recording his own riffs, his own drum beats, and making uh, the first demos of Dying Grotesque. Yeah, and then the project uh, became a band as uh, some of his friends joined it for uh, such as experimental uh, live performance. And then some new members joined the band and we started performing at different venues and different festivals throughout the, our country. Let's go to the music then. How would you describe the death metal of... Uh... Dying grotesque. Uh, it has some old school vibe, and in our latest album Celestio, it has some modern feeling uh, added to the uh, old school um, old school core of our music. You, you know, uh, I think it's a perfect mix between the traditional sound and some modern trends, maybe. What about the new song or? You know, new old song, The Nuclear Meadows, it's uh, out now, but it has a longer history. Could you tell me a bit more about this song? Yeah, exactly. We started working on material, on, uh, which is now on our second full-length album, Celestial, uh, just uh, after uh, the release of our debut. Sunflower Tide. And this material overcome some... Uh, modifications, some improvements since that time. And we even had several songs from the album, such as Nuclear Meadows and the second one, Satellites, even before the release of our latest EP, Before the Imminence. Uh, we just thought that these materials would fit better for a full-length album, combined with some newer material then uh, released as a single or EP at that time. So we just um, left it for a certain period and started making completely new mu music, which then became the EP before the imminence and the single Red Alert, which is a kind of experiment with the gaming theme because it refers to the Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 video game. And the Nuclear Meadows, uh, it is a story that tells about the Project Manhattan and the nuclear bombing of Japan in the historical perspective. And uh, kind of tinkers with the idea of further uh, future of humanity in terms of uh, spread of nuclear weapons, in terms of uh, nuclear terrorism. Because, you know, we are living in a country during the war times, and the uh, nuclear threats are mm, often heard from the Russian terrorists. We live in a fear, and uh, we just get used to it. You know, we get used to hear that we are going to be nuked and it's uh, it's so strange. It's a weird feeling, but uh, we are adapting to all the uh, reality we're living now. And in some terms, Nuclear Meadows is uh, uh, also a reflection of that feeling that you're living under uh, a constant democ democratic sort of nuclear bombing and other war actions, and uh, it uh, feels like uh, this weird, mad feelings, which is represented by our official lyric video. Yeah, as you said, uh, Celestial will be out in the end of next month, uh, 29th of November. 
So yeah, could you tell a bit more about because there's some uh, like you said older songs, but then of course new songs too. So could you tell a bit about the writing and recording process? Well, uh, it was a constant uh, pro- process of recording demos and other uh, new version versions of the songs since the 2020 to the uh, recent moment in which the album got mixed and mastered in its final final form. Uh, we had a lot of experiments uh, with the sound. Uh, our frontman, Vadim Sembolyuk, is a sound engineer by profession. So he got a lot of different recordings. We have uh, a, a kind of 10 different variants for each song with uh, diff- different sounding, with different sound effects and arrangements. Uh, so it was a constant uh, process of uh, development of our material. material. Uh, there are some differences between the early demos and the final variant. For example, one of the song even had a kind of jazz outro as an experiment and uh, some more uh, ambient arrangements in it. Uh, maybe this variant was better in some terms, but uh, the final one fixed more complex. It uh, mixes better the songs are mixed better with each other and it feels like a organic playlist not just a bunch of different songs included in one album if you compare the new album to the previous one the 2020 sunflower tide uh, what has changed well i think a lot of uh, things has changed uh, the Sunflower Types has uh, something like more old school and vintage sounding to it. And the uh, Celestial got more of the modern metal vibes. And uh, I think it works in the opposite way also, uh, as uh, the people who started who will start listening to Dying Grotesque from Celestial may be a little bit confused with the older material. But, you know, that's how we are progressing as a band. We have discovered a lot of uh, new ways of uh, composing and producing music this time. Uh, all of our members uh, were improving their skills of learning musical instruments. And uh, also our frontman learned a lot for the music production, for the music uh, uh, mastering, mixing, because he works as a freelancer, sound engineer also. And uh, this all uh, led to the current states, to our current sound. Uh, if Dying Grotesque uh, will keep on moving forward, I think there will be even more mm, improvements and differences in our sound. In our sound. Okay, maybe continuing on the new ways that you mentioned, uh, maybe you could uh, tell about another song from the upcoming album, which kind of has these uh, newer elements. Mm. We're going to release our sec- second single from the upcoming mm, album. It, mm, uh, the song is called Nyuma. Uh, it, uh, maybe it is uh, kind of familiar for the many uh, metalheads worldwide because of the famous uh, tools Nyuma. Uh, it this their song was like an inspiration, and we started digging out uh, what uh, this word is, what the storm refers to, and uh, came out came up with our own own interpretation. So the topic of this song is the kind of uh, antique knowledge. Uh, antique studies by humanity, which came completely abandoned now times, but maybe in some terms, even there is a reasonable core to, to this other studies that uh, the humanity abandoned. And maybe the modern society is lacking something of our older ideas. 
that were were introduced by by our ancestors. So that's just our kind of weird kind of surrealistic reflection on that scene. Okay, uh, you mentioned that the current situation and of course the Russian attack uh, had an effect on the music, maybe in the Nuclear Meadows and other songs, maybe too. How important is it that the live gigs still continue even under the Russian attack? Uh, we stopped performing live for some mm, because there are a lot of mm, problems with rehearsing together, with preparing to the live concert. There are uh, gigs and metal festivals in Ukraine. They're happening uh, nearly every weekend. But these are the small gigs for in, in our local venues. And, uh, you know, all these gigs are charitable. The funds are raising for our Ukrainian army to um, to help our, our defenders get the much-needed ammunition, the drones, uh, the protect, protection ammunition, and uh, the me- medicaments, all of that thing. Uh, I think it's important to keep on um, performing live, to keep on uh, helping our defenders in that way. Uh, it supports our local culture, it supports uh, the community of metalheads, of rockers and just music enjoyers in Ukraine. Uh, it, uh, and I think it's important for Ukrainian bands to be allowed to perform uh, on other countries. Because, you know, if the voices of Ukrainian artists do not uh, appear in the commun- worldwide community, uh, the Russian bands uh, start taking their place and they uh, start uh, spreading their lies, their own propaganda to worldwide. I think it's absolutely unacceptable, but uh, the situation is our, in our country is uh, completely uh, unstable. It, mm, and I know that uh, it will remain the same for some period of time, maybe a year, maybe several years. And we're just uh, uh, used to live in, live in such conditions. But we all are... Uh, doing our best to to make certain changes to Im- improve it and to help our country go through these hard times with these violent times and i hope it will end uh, with a fair peace fair for ukraine and that's absolutely important Going back to the music, and as you said, the situation, of course, is far from stable. How is it to plan for an album release, and what kind of uh, plans do you have for future after the album release? Oh, it's it was really hard to plan on the album release because, you know, we introduced the album to the label uh, two or three months prior to the release date. And uh, now we got used to make plans only for kind of a week afar, not not more, because there are a lot of conditions that can be changed in every moment. But uh, we just uh, created some uh, root map roadmap for our album release and we're just sticking to it if there are any unexpected uh, things happening we just make uh, mm, mm, we just modify a little part of this roadmap not the the whole mm, release uh, production period mm. Well, speaking of the next plans after the album release, uh, we haven't got any ideas of it, but we have uh, an unreleased demo from the earliest periods of Dying Grotesque history. We have uh, done some ideas for newer songs. Maybe uh, that we will make kind of 
uh, mixed release with some new material in the old demo, uh, like a compilation of the our recent stages and our uh, early stages. And I think it will be kind of interesting experience, inter interesting uh, release to hear because you, uh, within one album or EP, whatever, the listeners are go going to examine the start and the uh, modern times of the project. They can compare the sound, the feeling of their mu of this music, and uh, maybe discover our material in some in some newer points of view. So I think it will be an interesting experience. Also, we are open to some uh, split releases with different interesting band, death metal bands worldwide. And uh, that also can be one way of our further development. And, you know, in these times, we're not going to plan much further. We are sticking to our... Uh, the most, the closest goes, such as the album release, and then just prepare uh, the newer materials as the new ideas come up, as we get more uh, influences and ideas for the future releases. And uh, if the situation improves, I think we will be able to uh, um, start uh, performing live, uh, but... Uh, Currently, it, it this option is unavailable unavailable to us, unfortunately. We don't, of course, want to spoil anything. But uh, what's your kind of feeling? What musical direction are you going next with uh, Dying Grotesque? Uh, I think we'll just continue our experiments introduced in this second full length album, and maybe uh, get some different. Uh, ideas, some more mm, tricks on music production introduced. Uh, maybe it will be something more experimental with Tinker Lewis, all other styles of music. And uh, I don't know even if it's going to be uh, this way, but I, was, I personally was thinking about making materials in the style of uh, some, you know, intellectual death metal bands like Blood Incantation, Tomp Mold, uh, Necrot, they have a uh, really original, really a unique sound and the unique NDs introduced to, to their music. And our country does not have uh, death metal bands playing in that style, so I think it uh, will it would be great to fill in this niche within our country and maybe introduce uh, some new ideas uh, to this uh, kind of feeling of this kind of, uh, kind of stylistic of death metal sound. The metalheads worldwide should support Ukraine. We really need it. We need inf informational support. We need the spreading of information of what's going in our country of uh, what experience our, our people because you know this time is is completely un unstable we're literally waking up every night because they are uh, the shellings because the attacks of kami Iranian kamikaze drones that mm, the previous night was the same and I just uh, um, would like to ask the metalheads worldwide to support Ukraine, to donate to the trustworthy charitable funds, to um, oppose the Russian propaganda and to demand, demand of your local authorities to help Ukraine survive this horrible war. And I believe we will live in the world where the, where the fair peace would come and uh, we will um, be able to uh, continue working our, on our music, to continue li living our lives with, with, without the fear, without the risk of uh, getting killed or getting <clears throat> deprived or of your closest people. And I think the fair peace will come. And uh, I, I'd like to thank everybody who supports Ukraine this time. Mm -hmm.